Hello, I'm Clive May from the Florey Institute of Neuroscience and Mental Health at the University of Melbourne. The symposium, The Role of the Renal Nerves in Cardiovascular and Renal Function, organised by Drs. Campos and Bergamachi, was held at the first Pan American Congress of Physiological Sciences at Iguazo Falls in Brazil in August 2014. Symposium reports based on each of the five presentations will be published in the May edition of Experimental Physiology. The goal of the symposium was to review new advances defining the importance of the efferent and afferent renal nerves in sodium homeostasis and the effects of renal denervation and reinnervation on cardiovascular and renal function. First, some background. Based on the findings from many groups, it would be expected that destruction of the renal nerves would reduce blood pressure because the efferent renal nerves play a major role in stimulating renin release, causing renal vasoconstriction and inducing renal sodium retention. There is also evidence that in hypertension, increased afferent renal nerve activity may cause a reflex increase in sympathetic outflow and worsening hypertension. Numerous studies have shown that surgical renal denervation reduces blood pressure in animal models of hypertension, and surgical synthectomy was used to reduce blood pressure in hypertensive patients in the 1940s and 50s. This procedure was abandoned due to side effects and the advent of effective antihypertensive drugs. There are, however, many patients whose blood pressure is not effectively controlled with multiple antihypertensive drugs. There has recently been a revived interest in renal denervation as a treatment for hypertension following the development of a catheter-based technique that selectively denervates the renal nerves. Considering the possible widespread use of this technique in cardiovascular disease, it's critical to understand the role of the renal nerves in hypertension. The papers in this symposium present recent findings in this area. First, Dr. Campos presented studies of the mechanisms underlying sympathoexcitation in a renovascular two-kidney, one-clip model of hypertension, where there is evidence that sympathoexcitation is an important factor maintaining the hypertension. He described studies showing that rats with two-kidney, one-clip hypertension had an increase in AT1 receptors and NADPH oxidase in the RVLM and PVM. Interestingly, administration of Tempol or vitamin C intravenously or by, or by microinjection into the RVLM or PVM significantly decreased blood pressure in two kidney one clip rats. This was supported by findings that chronic treatment of two kidney one clip rats with vitamin C reduced blood pressure and expression of 81 receptors and NADPH units, subunits in both the RVLM and PVM. Furthermore, overexpression of superoxide dismutase in the RVLM using an adenoviral vector reversed the hypertension. These findings support the notion that increased oxidative stress in sympathetic premotor neurons contributes to the maintenance of renovascular hypertension. Dr. Bergamacci presented data from recent studies that investigated the molecular signaling mechanisms by which sympathetic nerve activity and angiotensin II regulate renal sodium reabsorption. It was shown that electrical stimulation of the renal nerve increased intrarenal angiotensin II and activated AT1 receptors, triggering a signaling cascade that led to elevations in sodium hydrogen exchanger isoform 3 mediated tubular transport and thus a reduction in sodium excretion. All responses mediated by stimulation of the renal nerves were abolished by 81 receptor blockade with Lasata. These findings demonstrate that acute increases in RSNA activate intrarenal 81 receptors, which subsequently increases sodium hydrogen exchanger isoform 3 mediated transport, resulting in antinaturesis and antidiuresis. I then presented studies that examined two critical questions regarding catheter-based renal denervation. One, how effective is the procedure? And two, does reinnervation occur? In the large animal model, it was shown that renal denervation with a simplicity catheter used in humans effectively denervated both renal afferent and efferent nerves, as judged by the lack of responses to stimulation of these nerves and the decreases in anatomical markers. D. 
Denervation of the distal portion of the renal arteries, where the nerves are close to the artery, may have accounted for the high degree of denervation seen. Interestingly, by 11 months after catheter-based denervation, functional and anatomical evidence of afferent and efferent renal nerve re was found. These findings challenge the current presumption that a permanent loss of renal afferent or efferent renal nerves after renal denervation underlies a long-term reduction in blood pressure in hypertensive patients. Dr. Nishi then gave an overview of the evidence that both efferent and afferent renal nerves influence the renal regulation of arterial pressure and body fluid balance. Her studies of two kidney one clip hypertensive rats demonstrated large increases in RSNA to both the ischemic and non-ischemic kidneys. Other findings indicate that selective desensitization of the renal afferent nerves with intrathecal capsaicin attenuated the increase in blood pressure in two kidney one clip rats, and denervation of the ischemic kidney reduced the level of hypertension. These studies indicate an important role for both the renal afferent and efferent nerves in determining renovascular hypertension. Finally, Dr. Oliviera Sales presented findings from a study that investigated whether cell-based therapy could repair the kidney damage induced by renal artery stenosis and whether renal function was improved. In renovascular hypertensive rats, intravenous administration of bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells improved the renal morphology and function. This was accompanied by a reduction of sympathetic vasomotor activity to the kidneys and in blood pressure, probably as a consequence of reduced afferent nerve activity from the diseased kidney. These interesting findings suggest that stem cell therapy may be a promising treatment to repair stenotic kidneys. To summarise, these presentations demonstrate the important role of both afferent and efferent nerves in the development of renovascular hypertension that stem cell therapy may act to repair stenotic kidneys, and that catheter-based renal denervation is effective, but that re occurs. I hope that the reports provided by the contributors to this symposium will provide a useful update and encourage investigation in this clinically relevant field.